Well, hello and welcome, everyone. You know, I hope that you had a really good DEF CON and you enjoy all the activities in the Red Team Village that we actually had at DEF CON. With me, I have the Red Team Village core team. And um, without any further ado, I'm actually going to pass it right to Wes to go over an overview, you know, of the CTF and what actually took place uh, in Vegas and, uh, and virtually, not only in Vegas. Thank you, Omar, for the uh, intro there. Uh, for the quals, I'm actually going to turn it over to Barry, let him kind of talk a little bit through of, uh, you know, some of the amazing work that our team did on the, on the quals, and then uh, I'll jump into the finals a little bit later. You're on mute. First off, I just want to thank the team that put it together. Uh, there was a lot of work that we put into it. Uh, there's over a dozen folks that uh, that helped contribute to the qualifiers as well as the, the final scenario. Last year was full remote, so we put together a, uh, a fairly immersive scenario based around uh, an old movie called Office Space. And then this year, we had two networks for every single team in finals. And the two, uh, the two themes there was Silicon Valley and The Office. And so this year, we knew we had to run a hybrid event. And so uh, we knew the assets were going to be up in the cloud. But we had a lot of logistics in terms of having an area there on the contest floor. We would interact with, uh, with players. We knew that a lot of our players were international and weren't able to travel because of uh, those restrictions. And so we wanted to make sure that, uh, that it was accessible to everybody across the board. This year, we had uh, a qualifying event that started the, the Friday of DEF CON and then rolled into, into Saturday. Um, the, the break that we had in the middle there, we, you probably wouldn't do that in the future just because it was a little bit of a, um, uh, it, was, it was hard schedule wise, but we had a lot of players play that. Uh, I felt like our infrastructure was good. We had all pretty much all new challenges, except I know that we used these older uh, beginner challenges that we've done. They're not really worth a whole lot of points, but we like to have, a, have something for everybody uh, on the qualifier. We took those top 20 teams. We announced who was progressing uh, forward into finals. We took a one hour break, which may have not been uh, enough time for everyone to recoup. And then we went right into finals and we had 20 teams advance. So we actually deployed 40 networks out to uh, out into AWS. Um, we, we really loved the feedback we got from the players in the DEF CON Discord channel. It was great to actually meet some of the players that were there uh, in, in Vegas. I know that uh, there's a couple folks from, uh, uh, from different teams and finals that we've only talked virtually, and so it was great to put a face to a, to a name or to a handle. And so that was, that was awesome. And then, uh, and then we left that network uh, open overnight. Uh, you know, different teams were, were, were fighting their way through the two different networks. In the end, though, AI generated uh, came out ahead. They, uh, they secured a lead in the front. They were able to get past that initial fish. Uh, take uh, um, execute the supply chain attack, the software supply chain software supply chain attack that then took them down into the other network. And for anybody who wasn't able to uh, get eyes on those networks, we're actually going to show the network map. And I'm going to hand it over to Wes now, and he's going to talk through the scenario, what we built, and uh, and why. Thanks, Barry. So yeah, definitely. You know, as as Barry was discussing, uh, a lot of similarities to uh, last year in regards of you know the finals round. Uh, you know, and a few repeat teams. Uh, so that was really nice, you know, having that familiarity uh, of those teams kind of coming back to us and understanding what that challenge is. Uh, so with that, you know, with the finals, uh, you know, depending on, uh, you know, what perspective you had and how your team divvied it up, you know, you probably saw a few different things. So what I'm going to show here is actually like the network map and to kind of give you an idea of how we kind of designed this. So this isn't uh, the final map, but this is pretty close to uh, what we came up with and then went into uh, actual, you know, devving this out and building this out and some kind of tweaks on here. So, you know, some of the, some of the uh, names, you know, uh, like the final challenge or whatever, uh, you know, we obviously figured that out. So we'll go through here. Uh, at the beginning, you know, there's a lot of uh, issues on the, uh, you know, getting your payloads to land and execute and not getting caught by Defender. So that was, uh, you know, I think a, a learning event for everyone. And then, uh, with that, uh, once, you know, if you're able to get actual foothold and get going with the actual payloads, uh, we disabled Defender on that. <clears throat> but once you get that initial foothold, then you're kind of in that network and then you're able to start poking around. So we had quite a few different things on there. We tried to, uh, you know, litter the box with kind of clues as you go along through the scenario. 
try to understand some of the different pieces. As you kind of move through that human resources, you know, there's a few little side quests as far as picking up some additional information, going off, um, you know, there's emails, different traffic like that to kind of get some of the clues on where you actually, you know, whether it's uh, credentials to be able to log into boxes a little later on. But with that, you eventually move from that, uh, you know, human resources department kind of over into the developer section. That's where we actually ended up having a uh, couple, like a Windows box and a Mac box. And with that, with those two, we just wanted you to kind of see part of the, uh, the source code. You know, some teams obviously saw it. And then uh, I think that, you know, definitely gave them a leg up as they moved on to the next box. But there's quite a few teams who just kind of burned through, uh, especially on the Mac box, kind of missing some of that source code. So they had a lot of troubles as they're like interacting with that CI CD pipeline. Uh, you know, trying to figure out what to actually kind of enter, uh, what to change kind of live on there. And uh, that was definitely a challenge for some folks. We saw, you know, some teams uh, kind of brick the service that was doing some of the deployments. So it was definitely super interesting to kind of watch the teams as they kind of move through, what decisions they made, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of payloads they put in there and what they had going. Uh, so it, once you're kind of successful and you're able, you know, to get a CI CD actually deploy and go through with that you'd land in that dunder muffin uh network uh in that regard you know you can kind of see some of our support boxes for smb uh, window shares things like that uh but again you know kind of moving that through we had some internal kind of web services uh with that like creed thoughts going through there some internal blogs things like that um <clears throat> and with that you could be able to actually get a back door get into the, like the shipping department kind of warehouse area um and from there you know each step you know we're, we're laying the kind of groundwork a lot of the clues kind of laying you through of like where to go what's next uh trying to litter it through so uh, i think this is where some of the larger teams struggled and definitely where we had a lot of the uh, you know kind of clues and hints and points of uh you know hey we just don't not sure like how to do this next thing or you know we're obviously missing a piece uh we think there probably should be credentials to this but we, we can't find them and a lot of it is just you know going back kind of communicating with the team understanding what they found where and where they found it. So with that, uh, they were able to kind of move it along, go in through the sales department. There's, you know, a vulnerable internal kind of sales website. They're able to kind of move along. And then definitely uh, another couple of internal websites. The final piece though is when they got into accounting, <clears throat> there there is a website where you'd uh, essentially do some privilege escalation, uh, get, you know, remote code execution on the website. So as a uh, local user, once you're there, there's, uh, we had a binary uh, where you could get, you know, your actual privilege escalation there, get the final flags. Uh, definitely, you know, some great feedback from some of the teams out there of how they kind of solved that last challenge, you know, maybe not our most intended one. Uh, so with all that, though, like, I know not every team was kind of successful uh, getting through this, but a number of teams, at least, you know, they got that foothold. They kind of enumerated that first network you know, uh, a decent portion of them kind of made in that second network. So that's why we just kind of wanted to talk a little bit at, at that high level, kind of see, you know, here is, I would say most of the boxes and in, to include support boxes that we kind of needed to build uh, to kind of make this scenario happen. So uh, with all of that, you know, uh, please, we love the write-ups. We love seeing the feedback. We love seeing how you solve this, uh, you know, definite lesson learned. Uh, you know, there's, there's a privest we missed uh that uh, we thought we were patched on and uh we weren't so we were a little disappointed that you know we kind of missed out on one piece there but uh it was definitely fun uh, our team definitely had fun watching all the players go through and uh you know kind of seeing that different perspective of how the players looked at it and kind of the troubleshooting things that we went through uh so <clears throat> with all that i'm going to turn it over to savannah she's going to kind of go through uh a lot of kind of like the stats and numbers of uh, everything that we did uh, yeah, so hi everyone. So for uh, the quals, we had 600, uh, over 600 teams and over 2,000 players that played in the quals and then 20 teams for the actual finals itself. And we actually have a few of the players from the finals team. So we have the EPT team and then we also have uh, people from Hack Street Boys that are going to be joining us on the stream today. Uh, so Omar, if you want to add them in, we can kind of introduce them. So there they are, they're all coming in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so do you guys want to introduce yourself on the stream? Either one, anyone can go first, it's up to you. <laughs> we can start with Hightail. All right, um, hi, I'm Hightail. Um, I'm one of the founders of Hack Street Boys, and we're hailing from the Philippines. Um, 
with me is Ian, uh, who is one of our uh, kind of a red team members. So just a quick background of Hack Street Boys. We are formed uh, by uh, professional members. Um, and we kind of separate ourselves into the blue team and the red team. So this uh, red team CTF was kind of a um, kind of a guide for for the blue teamers um, made by the red teamers uh, in order to guide us uh, into how how to solve like red team CTF problems and everything. So awesome! I'll pass it back to you, uh, HSB Ian. So HSB. Ian? Hi, thank you, Omar. So um, I'm Ian. Uh, I'm one of the members of Half Street Boys. Uh, we particularly um, play Capture the Flag events and try to uh, enhance our skills through these challenges. Awesome. And uh, EPT? I think you're on mute. And once again, actually, uh, for those of you watching, yeah, I'm part of the EPT team, and we're a team. Awesome. No, I'm not on mute now. You hear me now? I can hear you now. Mute. No, we can hear you. Ah, thank you. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I'm one of the team, uh, one of the members of the EPT team. We are. Uh, We can hear you. Okay. And uh, while we, you know, solve the technical issues there, first, first of all, is actually thank you guys. Um, some of you is extremely early in the morning, and some of you is extremely late at night, or even in the into almost the morning. So thank you for for making the timing here. So I'm going to pass it back again to you and one more try, EPT. All right, so there's another player that actually just joined, and I'm going only by your handle here, right? So Cymex73. Yeah. Uh, hello. There you go. Uh, yeah, my handle is like hard to pronounce, I know. Uh, I'm Simon. Shimex, Seismex from Mare Generated. Uh, yeah. Very, very cool. <laughs> You're in Norway right, as well, right? Uh, no. Uh, we are like from all over the world. Uh, some from Germany, some from Poland, some, okay. I think, Canada and UK. Excellent. And can you tell us a little bit, you know, how big was your team? your strategy uh, we were originally 10 people uh, uh ended up with nine because one had to uh go play the main def comes nice and and you guys won last year you were first place last year so this makes two yeah yeah we yeah we did although i wasn't there for the win uh, i only joined this year it was a lot of fun playing with, with everyone. Uh, I got up to finals last year too. Uh, this year's network was also uh, a lot of fun playing. Uh, there were some oversights with with some unintended, which uh, kind of allowed us to, to uh, speed through some of the boxes. But uh, overall, it was a nicely designed network and. We really enjoyed it. Nice. I love hearing that. If I would ask a question to all of you, you know, what was the the favorite part of the CTF for you? Like the favorite challenge or the most challenging one or anybody? Man, when everybody goes at uh, once. When I start picking on people, so it's like my keeper. <laughs> yeah. Uh at least for me, uh, the whole supply chain attack part with the CICT box was very interesting. And we spent a while on it, uh, partially because of the broken bot on the other network, which, uh, yeah, there was a lot of debugging on, on the box. We uh, 
that we had to do uh, to figure out what was wrong, but uh, it ended up working after all. So yeah, it, it was a very nice part part of the the CDF. Very cool. How about you, Hytel? Um, the supply chain attack as well. Uh, it was very interesting for us. And coming from a blue team background, it, it, it's actually my first time to actually um, experience it, like firsthand. Um, and so, so we ended up with like uh, blue team skills to in order to debug why it was working and why it wasn't working. So we, ha we, we relied heavily on TCP dump in order to check if, if the binaries were getting uh, downloaded or not. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, it, it was really, really uh, fulfilling and um, challenging for us. Very cool. Yan? Yeah, same for me. Um, we had particularly challenges when uh, we were doing the CICD um, supply chain attack. So just to mention that we enjoyed it a lot. Uh, those uh, struggles and obstacles, uh, we learned a lot. And one of our teammates, Hawk Curry, actually created a write-up on the supply chain attack because we enjoyed it a lot uh, and it was quite a struggle to answer it. But it's quite interesting how the infrastructure was set up and uh, it's really a unique experience. Oh, very cool. And I'm going to try one more time, EPT. Uh, let's see if um, your audio is coming through now. Yeah, we can try one more time. Do you hear me better now? Or... We can hear you. No. At least no for sound. two seconds. One of the members of the team of uh, colleagues in one in the, uh, one company in Norway. And as, as the other hair had said, we had a lot of fun doing this. So we we ended up uh, hiring a cabin. So everybody joined in the same cabin. So it was quite fun. And we had a lot of fun with the challenges. So, and, and we had the same kind of big challenge with the, the supply chain attack. Um, so that's gonna, that was really nice. Uh, uh, I think we went a big uh, detour in, in owning and rooting the box. We were root on it, the build server, before we... Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I'm showing a picture of that cabin, right? Yeah, that's the picture of one of uh, the team members. Yeah, that's the cabin. That was the conference room between the two cabins that were built together, like one big cabin so we had yeah it's quite fun that's very cool i'm jealous <laughs> we definitely uh took some inspiration from you you all uh last year because we saw the cabin and we were doing it all remote and we were like you know we need to come together and, and do this all uh together and not spread out next time so uh we we're super excited we got that airbnb kind of off the strip and kind of two twofold purposes all the streaming that we did is uh well as kind of have all the team together. Uh, let's kind of take a cue out of your playbook uh, and do all the logistics and everything and you know build some camaraderie there. So thanks for the idea. Yeah, I can really recommend it. It's super fun. It makes it like twice as fun doing it remotely separately. So if you're able sure. to just do it. Very, very true. And once again, thank you for participating. So Savannah, I'm going to pass it back to you for some of the statistics. Oh, uh, so <laughs> the players, uh, we had over 2,000 players. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, they did the statistics. We're good. We're good. I, I think it's over to me now, I think. Uh, maybe. Uh, Sorry. I, I just had I have one comment. Um, sure. We we really love the fact that everyone liked that supply chain attack. Uh, when we started coming up with a scenario, it was right when the solar winds uh, came out, and, uh, and and right around that time, there was maybe four or five pretty big uh, supply chain attacks that happened. And so we we're like, oh, this is great. We'll do this theme. And we thought when we started then that that would still be the hot topic by the time we got to DEF CON. Little did we know that there was going to be massive ransomware attacks that you know took over the news before we got to DEF CON. 
but uh, but yeah, we were, we're we were hoping that uh, that was enjoyable. That uh, you know, just just how easy it is to 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 uh, do that supply chain uh, interdiction, especially when it's software driven and it's uh, and it's really hard to uh, hard to detect. And so, for anybody out there who didn't see it, uh, the way we had it set up was it was a CI/CD pipeline that would uh, generate uh, an installer for this this fake software, and then in the other network we had a uh, a script that just acted like a bot. It would go and it would check. Uh, periodically for any updated software. And then if it got that software, if it saw that there was an update because it was doing a hash match, then it would download and, uh, and execute it. So great to hear the feedback. Um, and have any other uh, questions for, for the players? Uh, really do appreciate everyone dialing in, kind of telling us uh, firsthand uh, how you like the uh, event. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for participating and always supporting the Red Team Village. I know that it's not the first time for a lot of you, and as a matter of fact, not the first time winning either. So uh, kudos and, and thank you for your support. Hope to see you in the next one. Huh? All right, so with that, uh, we just want to kind of thank everyone that kind of participated in our prize giveaway, kind of filled out our forms, everything else. So, uh, you know, Big shout out to uh, Sector 7. Uh, they're able to kind of offer up uh, a number of 50% uh, off for their Malware Essentials courses. Uh, you know, I've taken this myself. It's an amazing course, a lot of good information. Uh, you know, and Sector 7 kind of always came comes through with us. They both offered, you know, uh, kind of prizes for our finalists, everything as well. So uh, a huge, huge shout out to them. So with that, uh, big thanks for everyone that took the time to fill out the form. And on the screen here, you can see uh these are the winners uh i we were trying to pronounce them earlier i'm not going to attempt to read them now uh but big thanks uh if your name's on here uh you won uh one of the 50 percent off coupons for malware essentials from sector seven and with that uh, we'll also reach out directly to you and let you know uh that you won so again big thanks to sector seven I just, I just want to remind everyone, uh, you'll get an email from Pony5 with the prizes. <laughs> so they'll be coming out from uh, Pony5. And I'll go ahead and switch it back to Omar to go ahead and go to the sponsors. That, that's awesome. From now on, <laughs> from this stream onwards, we're going to pronounce Pony IP as Pony Pie. <laughs> it's dyslexic. Uh, so it's nothing personal, just his dyslexia. Just It's Pony Pie. So he just he spells it wrong. That, that's that's the reason that we're laughing, you know, behind the scenes. So, but thank you again, Sector Seven, and as, as a matter of fact, thank you to all our sponsors. Without you, none of these will actually would be happening. Um, not only the impact to the to the Red Team Village, but the impact to the community as a whole, right? So, our goal is to always have, you know, a, an industry-wide, international, you know, opportunity for people to learn, and uh, that's actually our mission. You know, it's actually to bring learning environments that you can actually practice your skills in a safe environment, learn from each other, collaborate and network. So um, I'm going to share real quick, you know, all our sponsors, a lot of them in here, right? From Sector 7 to Bishop Fox to Hack the Box to Optif to Specter Ops, and the list goes on and on, right? So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, with that, I think that is everything um, that we had for today. Any quick round table if I miss anything. Uh, if not, uh, thank you again. Yeah. yeah I've got one real, real quick. Uh, if if you're not on the Discord, you join the Discord. There's a lot of good conversation there. Uh, we've got some events coming up. Uh, we're participating in HacktivityCon with uh, with Hacker HackerOne. Uh, that's going to be uh, in a little less than a month now. So we have that CFP open if you've got, if you've got a talk. Uh, also, for the different events that we get involved with, you know, it's all just volunteers jumping in. So if you've got something you want to talk about, maybe you want to uh, run a workshop or uh, or help with the CTF, you know, please, uh, you know, please reach out on uh, on Discord and uh, and we could always use the help. You you remind me of the biggest thing in there, of course, our next event. And let me actually share that in the screen real quick. As uh, Pony IP mentioned, you know, please, 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 uh, you know, participate in this event. And it's a it's a conference, even though it's hosted by Hacker One, it's actually built by the community for the community. We're gonna have tons of speakers, multiple villages. We're not the only ones there as well. And um, 
the CFP, as he mentioned, is actually open. And if you also click on the little icon in the screen, it will take you to this page. And it's September 18th. And again, it's an international conference and it's uh, free. So with that, thank you again for all your time. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.